Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer. Today we're looking at what is universally regarded as a classic. It's Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive, but we're not actually going to be looking at the Mega Drive version too much because the quality that I can pull off the Mega Drive isn't great. And I don't want to use an emulator when I've got the original game here plus I've got it on the Sonic Mega Collection Plus, which is a very useful set of games that came out on PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube. So it's basically all of the good Sonic games, plus some of the not so good Sonic games in one box for your gaming pleasure. And I actually quite like that compilation. So we're going to have a look at the game on that because graphically it's a little bit better to get the quality off the uh, recordings so we're going to do it that way. Sorry guys, sorry for all you purists who want to see the Mega Drive version. Here's a bit of the Mega Drive version and here's a comparison with the Xbox compilation. As you can see it is graphically better and I think you can all agree for the purposes of reviewing this on YouTube it looks a little bit better if we use the newer version. So let's stop beating around the bush and actually get to the game. Sonic the Hedgehog. How can we not cover this game? It is one of Sega's best. The bright blue hedgehog who just knows how to kick some butts. And his uh, companions later on that showed that Sega really didn't know how to catch lightning in a bottle twice, did they? But let's la talk about that for now. Let's get straight in with the original game. So we're starting out on the Green Hill Zone, which is of course the one that everyone remembers. It's also the one that most of us played through and actually enjoyed. I think we can all agree that once we get past the first few, it's not quite the same, is it? We've got Marble Zone, Spring Yard Zone. Spring Yard, I find, is not bad. But then we get on to like, Labyrinth and we get stuck in water and everyone hates these levels. Starlight Zone, I think, really feels more like a later Sonic game. I'm always reminded of the casino area in Sonic 2 when I see the Starlight Zone. I think it's just the background because Spring Yard is more like the casino area if you think about it. And then of course we get to Scrap Brain Zone which is essentially the final area. I mean we have a zone called Final Zone but Scrap Brain Zone is pretty much the last one that you play through and it's also in my view the worst. It feels like an area that has really run out of ideas, but we'll come back to that because I want to talk also about the bonus stages. I think we all know the bonus stages. It's where you get immensely dizzy and it looks like someone took an awful lot of LSD before they started programming it. We've got blocks that turn into birds in the background, basically here to show off the Mega Drive's prowess, and it does it really well. I mean, look at all the colours on screen and the fine movement, which is all flowing so nicely. It's just an amazing feat of technology at the time to get this flowing so well with that good music and all the colours and spins and turns. It, it's a powerhouse of gaming and I believe that we all recognise it very nicely. It does of course get progressively harder in this zone because the shapes change. Every time you go into it, all the shapes are changing and it gets more and more difficult, which of course you would expect because that's how games progress. You want harder and harder as you go on, otherwise where's the challenge? So yeah, I really like this, and this is of course how you get the Chaos Emeralds, which are the point of the game. And I think when you see the end that I managed to get, you'll realise I didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds because I'm not good enough at these particular zones. It's one of those things where you really have to memorise them by playing and playing again, otherwise you're not going to be able to do it. And unfortunately, I haven't memorised them. I used to know these off quite well because I played Sonic all the time. It was one of the few games on the Mega Drive that I actually could afford to get because everyone had it so it was cheap and that's how I got my copy second hand. And as a result I played it a lot, knew the levels and now I can't remember them. Just one of those things, isn't it? So let's talk about the actual zones again. So we've got the first one, the most famous with the loops, it is of course Green Hill Zone and I think we all know and love this one. It is the best of the zones. The starting one, they put an awful lot of effort in. It shows off the Mega Drive's graphics and sound and gameplay abilities quite well. I really, really like this one. So I think you you probably like it too, and I don't really want to spend too much time covering something that we all know is good. So let's move on to the one that no one likes. The Marble Zone with all the lava and the falling blocks and just getting stuck. Basically, it's it's not great. 
It's got second level syndrome. You've gone through the first area, which everyone can agree isn't. They spent a lot of time on there. It's like, what do we do now? Let's just throw something together. That's what it feels like. It's not good. But uh, let's move on to something better. I love the springs and the, the next zones. And it's just so much fun to go through this. Yeah, you get lost sometimes. Yeah, you end up getting stuck on these bouncy bits. But it's all in good fun. And I really like it. So can't say bad about it and of course Sega liked it as well because it's basically this casino zone from Sonic 2 and um, it's the first draft of that so yeah I love I love it I think you'll like it and the music's great too then we come on to the labyrinth that no one likes no one in their right mind wants to get stuck underwater where Sonic slowed down who puts that into a game it's a game about going fast and now you've got three levels where you can't go fast no one wants that. Come on, Sega. Plus, of course, there's this awful bit where you're sliding down some slopes and you've got to jump at the right point at exactly the right point as well. Otherwise, you can't get through it. You just keep going round and round and round until you finally manage to fluke your way onto a separate area that isn't covered in water and you get to press a button to go on with the rest of the game. It's not great. It's actually quite poor design and it's, it's a bad way of making sure your game lasts a bit longer. I really don't like this. And unfortunately, that's what really sums up the later part of this game. It's just pulling it out longer than it needs to. And as a result, it actually it mars the feeling that you have. There you are. I finally got to it. That's actually not far down those slopes, but you keep going round and round until you get to it. Can someone remind me why this is a classic? Because I remember it being better than this and certainly less frustrating. So yeah, it is. it mars the end of the game and it really sums up the end part of Sonic. And then finally once you get past it, you get to Starlight Zone, which is a little bit of a brief reprieve. It's not as bad as the Labyrinth, but it's not as good as the earlier levels. So yeah, we'd, we just go through this and now by this point, I was essentially just waiting for the game to end, which is not good. Not for a game that I adored as a kid. And then we have come on to the final, final areas. We've got Scrap Brain Zone, which is just awful. And you end up just ugh, going round and round and round, literally on these things, trying to get through the game. I really, really didn't like this zone. The entire zone just feels like it's just pulling the game out just a little bit longer, just to keep you going a little bit further, making you feel like you've got your money's worth. Even though, to be honest with you, if they left this out and just gone straight to the final act, I wouldn't have minded. It's just one of those things. You have to time these jumps perfectly, which, I'll say this uh, straight off, is a good representation of how difficulty gets harder on a game as it goes along. I'll grant you that. It's meant to get harder and more challenging, but this felt so obnoxious to me that you've got to try and time everything right or you have to do it all over again. And I mean all of it. You don't go back a little bit. You go right to the bottom of these things again with, that, with these running round, going on and on, going and going. It just annoyed me so much. Let's move on to the bad guys now. Dr. Robotnik, one of the best cartoon villains of 16-bit era, and any era, to be honest with you, with his uh, just weird inventions. He gets progressively more difficult, and it's actually not a bad challenge. He does get progressively more difficult. It doesn't jump from really easy to really hard. It's pretty good. So all of his devices are different. All of its strategies for trying to kill Sonic are different, and I like that. It has proper imagination. Sega haven't skimped on the imagination for how these set pieces go, and it still remains pretty easy once you know what you're doing. There are a few areas where things get switched up, of course. I mean, here in the Labyrinth, you don't fight Robotnik, he just runs away when he sees you coming, which is pretty funny in my view. You hit him once and then he's off and you have to chase him. That's it. No set piece there, which was quite a surprise when I first did it. But after that, it makes up for it by, I think, my favourite of all of the boss fights. Just launching his bombs back at him with his own seesaws. It's a lot of fun. And after that, we again find that we're just stuck. <laughs> it's one of those oddities. The scrap brain zone is weird. You have to run around and if you don't do it properly, you go back to the start of Scrap Brain Zone Act 3. And then if you do do it properly, you get to jump straight to the final zone. It, it's like, yeah, okay, you're changing things up. I can, I can understand that, that's fine. And then you get this. This is the final boss fight, and it's... I don't know, 
there's just something missing. I think it's the, the random factor of which of the tubes Robotnik is in that annoys me. I just didn't find this appealing. You get there eventually and it's basically just smack him when you see him. But to me it was just something missing. I think it is the random factor of which tube he's in. If you're a really hardcore Sonic fan, you probably know these timings off by heart and it's not random or something like that. But to me it just always feels like he's just not there when I want him to be in there when I don't. So it annoyed me but you get through it and then you get to the final set piece which is all fun and games. You finally get to chase Robotnik into his little uh, flying thing and then attack him once and that's it. Bam. There you go. That's it. That's Sonic over with. So all in all I think actually it's a pretty good game. It's one of those where it suffers a little bit from being an, a reasonably early game. I mean, this is the 16-bit era. We were starting to know what games were like and what they should feel like and what, how they should play. And Sonic does it well to a certain extent, but there are still some annoyances. Like the, I, I think it is the problem of the end game zones. Just don't quite cut it, in my view anyway. But for the most part, it's a really good game. And I think if you play it now, even if you come into it fresh now, I think you'd still enjoy it. There's a lot here to like about Sonic. It's still a definite classic, despite some of the problematic areas. Okay, there we are. It is a classic game. I think you'll all agree, putting aside all the bits where it really, really annoys, and also putting aside the fact that I really do think they had completely run out of ideas by the end of the game. It's just one of those things. The late game content in the early Sonic games isn't that good. Sorry, guys. I really find... The earlier levels where clearly they've put all of the polish and all the time in are far superior to the later bits where I don't think they'd expected many gamers to actually be able to get that far. But that's how it is. Anyway, that's the old style for you. No school like the old school, especially in terms of... Actually, no, now I might think about it. Most games are still like that. They don't expect gamers to get to the end and don't put as much effort into the finale. It's just one of those things. But kind of frustrates, especially when it's a game that's loved so much like Sonic is. I do love this game, especially the opening uh, zones. The Green Hill Zone, of course, is a classic, but some of the other ones that start the game are still pretty good. I mean, Marble Zone I could get. I could do without that one, and Labyrinth, and oof. Oh. In fact, there's not a many zones in this game that I actually like, which is probably why I like Generations, where I just went, uh, Green Hill Zone. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off topic. We'll, we'll cover that one at a different day. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like this. And if you did, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so they'll know a good game when they see it, and do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching Game Hammer on the Knob Mouse channel, and I'll see you later.